Hey guys, welcome to Lima Bean Living. In my last two videos, I shared how Juan and I found out the gender of our unborn child without spoiling the surprise for any of our family members or friends. And I shared how we decided to break the news to my family with a bun-themed party. Make sure to check out those videos after this one if you haven't already seen them. In today's video, I will be sharing everything I did to prep for the party, including decorations, food, and drinks. For your convenience, I've timestamped each item down below in the description box if you want to skip ahead or review any of these decorations or recipes. I hope you enjoy. So first up, we have our super simple backdrop made from Dollar Tree table covers. After taking the cover out of the plastic wrapping, cut about one inch strips. Make sure you don't undo any of the folds. This will make the cutting the strips much easier. Once all the strips are cut, unravel and separate them and tie them to a string or some yarn. I folded mine in half and held the center loop of the strip on one side of my yarn, then fed the ends of the strip through the loop and pulled tight. If you want a ceiling to floor length backdrop, consider just tying the strip to the yarn with a simple knot. When I went to Dollar Tree, I was hoping to find both pink and blue table covers, but unfortunately they were clearing out the store and only had pink and white. So I picked up some blue pom-poms to add to my decorations instead. This DIY is something that can be done way in advance to avoid extra stress the day of the party. And on that topic, I did try to get as much done beforehand as possible to make my life easier. However, if I shared what I did in actual order, this video would be quite chaotic. So I will just make a note on the screen when each step was done, if completed over the course of a few days.
Next up, I needed to prepare the family sign with the baby's name for the name reveal portion of our party. Make sure to check out our reveal video to see the final results. I actually made this sign for about $3 using Dollar Tree products and it was quite easy. I will link the tutorial video up above if you want to make something similar for yourself. A few days ahead of the party, I prepared chocolate-covered pretzels using melting chocolates and sprinkles. You might be able to find pink and blue dipped pretzels already assembled in stores to make your life easier, or you can be like me and just take on as much as you can chew. Either way, these are a fun treat to have. Next up was dyed deviled eggs. I like to boil mine for 17 minutes before an ice bath. Then I peeled the eggs and soaked them in pink and blue dyed water until they became my desired color. Once my eggs were dyed, I stored them in the fridge in a paper towel lined container. The next day, the day before the party, I cut the eggs in half, took out the yolks, and made the filling by combining the yolks with mayo, mustard powder, salt, and pepper. I did this to taste, but you can easily search for exact measurements in recipes online. Once the filling was made, I stored it in a piping bag in the fridge. I also returned the egg whites back to their container with new paper towels and found a spot in the fridge for them too. The day of the party, I assembled the deviled eggs on their serving plates and topped the pink ones with paprika. I took this approach mainly to save refrigerator space because ours was really limited. Obviously, if you have tons of room in your fridge, you could probably assemble these the day before to limit the stress the day of. Next up, I made Funfetti mini donuts using a new silicone mold that I got off of Amazon. Because I was going to be making a homemade cinnamon buns for dessert, I thought I would take it easy and do a box cake for these donuts. After the 4th of July, we picked up some red, white, and blue Funfetti mix, and I thought this would be perfect for a gender reveal because it kind of looks like pink and blue once baked. Still I'm better with and without you. Charming to me I just need this to be real I don't need no fairy tale 
To frost the donuts, I just took a tub of Pillsbury frosting and microwaved it for 30 seconds to get it runny. Then I divided it in two bowls and colored them pink and blue. Next, I just dip the donuts in the frosting and top them with sprinkles. When the frosting starts to cool, it does get more firm, making it harder to dip. When this happens, just microwave the bowl of frosting for about 10 to 15 seconds and give it a mix and you should be good to go. Two days before the party, I also prepared a yummy cream cheese marshmallow dip to go with some fresh strawberries. A single recipe calls for about 14 ounces of marshmallow fluff, or two containers, and an 8 ounce brick of cream cheese. However, I doubled this recipe for the party, so keep that in mind. All you have to do is whip the two ingredients together and you are good to go. I stored the mixture in an empty cream cheese container until the day of the party to save space, but you can store it in its serving container if you have the space in your fridge. The day of the party, I decided to add some pink and blue by dyeing a little bit of the dip, plopping on pink and blue dollops on top, and swirling them with a knife. The night before the party, I set up a little station for our friends and family to write letters to our little one for when he or she turns 18. We did this when I was pregnant with Aubrey and it is a tradition that I hope to continue if we are blessed with more children. Next up, we have babies in a blanket, also known as pigs in a blanket. I bought these little weenies and crescent roll dough, and using half of one crescent triangle, I wrapped a little weenie in such a way that it resembled a swaddled baby. We wrapped half of the weenies the day before the party and stored them covered in the fridge in case we ran out of time the day of to make them all. And then the day of the party, I dyed an egg white, pink, and blue, and gave these little babies an egg white wash so that we'd have babies swaddled in pink and blue blankets. Had I not had family to help me assemble the rest of these, I would have definitely needed to prep all of these the day before because time was limited.
It's hard for me to let go But I think that I'm finally feeling good again So hard cause I loved you But I'm finally feeling like myself All of the wounds that were opened by you are now closing the night before the party, I assembled the balloon arch I bought off Amazon. The pack came with a variety of sizes of balloons. So before I did anything, I sorted out the balloons so that assembling the arch would be much easier. Instead of using the flimsy plastic strip that came with the pack of balloons, I also purchased a reusable arch that attaches to the end of the table. I believe the balloons cost about $11 and the arch kit cost just under $15. After blowing up the balloons, you just attach them to these little plastic rings and then feed the collapsible rod through the hole of the rings. Then comes the two-person job of bending the rod to secure in the table attachments. Once the arch was assembled, I attached the mini balloons using these little glue dots that came in the balloon kit. I love the way this turned out and I'm excited to use this technique again for Aubrey's third birthday party, which is just around the corner, so stay tuned. The night before the party, I also outlined a very detailed schedule of everything that needed to be done the day of the party. This really helped me stay on task and gave my family an idea of what they could help me with and what they should stay away from if they wanted to lend a helping hand. I definitely plan on doing this again in the future. Now let's move on to the highlight of the party, the cinnamon buns. I've shared this recipe before and I will link that video up above. The day before the party, I made a triple batch of the cream cheese frosting. My plan was to place some pink or blue food coloring in the center of it, then cover up the food coloring with more frosting so that no one would see the gender reveal color. 
I was a little nervous that the color would bleed or be absorbed by the frosting, so I saved the coloring process for the day of the party. This ended up working out well and I had no issues. I kept the bowl in the fridge until about 30 minutes before the reveal so that it would soften up a bit. Overall, I'm very pleased with how this reveal turned out. The day before the party, I also prepared the filling for the cinnamon buns and I measured out two sets of the dry ingredients to make life easier the next day. The day of the party, I made two batches of the cinnamon bun dough and assembled the buns before our guests arrived. During the beginning half of the party, I let the buns rise in their pans and then I baked them about 20 minutes before the reveal so that they would be ready to enjoy as soon as the frosting was mixed and colorful. These treats were definitely a highlight of the evening. Another fun addition to this party was our cotton candy drink station. I bought some cotton candy from the Dollar Tree and split it up in a bunch of cups. Our guests could either eat the cotton candy by itself or pour some 7-Up on top for a fun, colorful experience. The final taste was also enjoyable as well. The other bun-themed food I incorporated in the party were sliders. I prepped the buns the day before the party by slicing them in half.
The day of the party, I lined cookie trays with foil and pressed ground beef, filling the entire pan about an inch thick, then seasoned the meat with steak seasoning. I probably used somewhere between two to three pounds of meat in the pan, and this was enough for about 24 Hawaiian rolls. But these pans and the rolls were very large, probably much larger than what you would need. So I would recommend maybe about one to two pounds of meat in a 9 by 13 pan, and then probably like 12 Hawaiian rolls or 16 Hawaiian rolls. Next, I sprayed the buns with cooking spray and let them toast in the oven at 350 degrees. When they came out, I topped the bottom buns with Thousand Island dressing and lettuce, and the top buns with mayo. I cooked the meat trays in the same 350 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes, drained off the fat, and topped the meat with cheese. I threw this back in the oven just to melt and then transferred the meat to the buns. Then I just cut the sliders and we were ready to serve all of our guests all at once. I love this method and can definitely see myself doing it again in the future. The last thing I needed to prep was pouring out our store-bought candy and making sure the snack table was set. I have to say throwing this party was a bit overwhelming at times because I wanted it to be perfect and there were a number of items that had to be done during the party, like making the sliders so that they would be hot and baking the cinnamon buns so that they could be served warm. Making my timestamp schedule definitely helped things run smoother. Overall, I'm super happy with how everything turned out and the guests really seemed to enjoy themselves. I hope this video gave you some inspiration if you are throwing a gender reveal party or really any gathering. If you liked this video, please leave it a big thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed. I will be throwing another party soon celebrating my daughter's third birthday, and you won't want to miss it. Have an amazing day, and I'll catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.